Hello and welcome back, I'm Darcy Darkness and this is Behind the Mash Reviews and I just wanted to jump on and show you this monstrous box which is 16 kilograms of rose beef that we were lucky enough to source from a somewhat local farm. It is in the Tenna district where we live but it's not that close, you have to drive there but Mosquito Farm, I've been, uh, my family have been drinking their milk for a very very long time my son absolutely loves their milk and we were lucky enough when well, my husband found that they were doing their meat boxes again and we missed out the last time they did it and again when we went on the tour today the farmer he was explaining like during lockdown they couldn't actually keep up with the demand because you know what it was like to get meat and things like that um, and good quality meat is incredibly difficult people are having to order their shopping and order their meat and their butcher meat from down south they weren't if you couldn't get it in scotland you were having to go elsewhere so it made me miss you know going to farmers markets uh, and local markets and getting local produce and supporting your local farmer and supporting local um so because everything's gonna reset itself and gone back and people are not doing what they were doing before whereas we were looking for a new place to buy our mid predominantly meat obviously if you don't know i was keto into in 2018 to 2022 and i was also carnivore in that time which means you eat nose to tail i don't like waste so it was incredibly difficult because there was limitations on what we could buy in the supermarket or buy before we could actually get a suitable farm or area for us to actually buy the meat again so this was bought frozen which again is not uncommon but it's really good for me because it means I can put it straight in the freezer. There is a lot of steak mince, which is great because, again, steak mince is an ingredient that you can stretch and make it last. They're in just under half, just over half kilogram bags, as you can see here. So it's like 556 grams, so like just over half kilo. So these can stretch, you can make so many different dishes with these so much a uh, little roast like this silver side two silver sides there are there's two top side there is some diced beef in there pork side steak i think there's nine steak mince and like i said that's a staple in most families basically diet because again it can be used for things like lasagna and what well, you can make bakes and everything and you can use burgers or you can have bog standards scottish mince you can make like cottage pie cumberland pie there's loads of things you can make and yeah she cottage pie technically is lamb but depending on what you have in your freezer and in your fridge you can make anything work you can even experiment and make things you can make a chili you could make spicy beef you could do anything there's also t-bone steak here also buffalo but literally makes me want to make the dish from Babylon 5. It also goes here. So, yeah, there's loads here. Ribeye steak, rump steak, fillet steak, pope's eye. Like I said, this is probably, it would be technically a couple of months for maybe, or even a year for some people. But when you predominantly eat high protein diet like myself, you kind of need this meat. This would be like a month easy for me, for myself, not even for my family. So where do you buy your meat? Have you noticed a difference in the quality of buying locally and small or from a farmer's market to the supermarket? What is your best, what, what is your favourite, should I say? What is your favourite steak? What do you prefer? Do you prefer sirloin? Do you prefer fillet? Do you prefer T-bone? Do you prefer... Do you know what I like? I like dairy cow steaks because of the fat cap on them. They are freaking delicious. And the marbling on them and again the texture of the meat and also the taste of the meat even with this because it is from a smaller organic farm. You're going to taste the difference. You're going to taste nothing like it in this world when animals are free to roam and eat better ingredients and eat better. He took us around where the the cows actually eat and 
It was like plantains and different clovers and different grass. And eating that way, the cows eating that way, uh, the, they're not missing out on anything. They're getting a better diet, which means their milk is better, which is better for us as well because we're drinking that mammal's milk. So you're getting all these nutrients in the milk. So that's another good way. Again, do you, is that an interest of you? Do you like finding out about how, where your meat comes from and how it is raised and what your, what the animals are eating? Is that something you're interested in like I am? And the engineering that goes around and how they rear their animals. So if you are in the area where Mossy Old Farm is or you can travel to them, I would say please go and support your local farm, your local butcher, all local small businesses because again they have things that um, you don't necessarily get elsewhere and you're also supporting them in their footprint or their hoof print as they put it in Wasio Farm. You know, like you're helping them and supporting them by purchasing their products so they can make the difference for the long run, for the future, not just for their farm, but for the environment and making all these changes. And I am so happy that I've found a place that is as passionate about food and the environment as they are at Mosquito Farm. So they are not going to, they're not getting rid of us anytime soon. So, ha ha. <laughs> so... I will be, over the time, I will be taking a note of what I have and what we're going to make um, for minces and things like that. Again, burgers, different types of burgers, because I tend to eat a lot of things that are easy for me to eat and that are, again, not that I don't want to use a knife and fork. <laughs> Sometimes I don't have the time to use a knife and fork, so basically having something that's easy that I can grab and put in a wrap or just food to go. Uh, steaks. Well, I simply just have them with a wee bit of black thorn salt and that's that. I don't even put pepper on them. That salt's just amazing, so I tend to have that. I'm not a big fan of bones on the steak, but any of the bones after cooking I will use in making bone broth. And that's what we're talking about today because the bones that you get back, you could easily bake them. And then boil them. Because when you bake them, you're, you're releasing the good vitamins and the collagen and everything that's in the bones so once you've baked them and you boil them like in a pressure cooker or on the on the hob then you're releasing even more and you get that gelatinous beautiful bone broth that a lot of people pay a fortune for and it's it's not that hard to make it's not that hard to produce as long as you've got enough bones and the right accessories to prepare them and cook them then you can make delicious bone broth you can do so much Again, my dogs are raw fed and I make bone broth for them with the addition with parsley, which is good for their heart and also their breath. And also I do a turmeric, which is good for their joints and their connective tissues and their teeth as well. So we do a lot of nose to tail. We used to buy like the like half the, the animal or even the full animal when we were eating a lot more meat than we are now but it's just predominantly me who eats a anabolic high protein diet and for them gains you got to feed your body with the right and the best ingredients especially for your budget as well i can get that some people don't have maybe the 300 pound spend on something like this but in the long run when you find this could literally be someone like for a full year if you have a chest freezer then that's good or you can have it with someone but I'm not having this with anyone. I have a chest freezer and I've cleared it to the point where I have just for meat basically proteins go in two big baskets and that definitely be some sort of lasagna or bake getting made spicy mince it's made in here as well. I could also make not a donor technically but I could technically make a similar sort of Indian kebab similar style to the donor um which you can make in your slow cooker and when i'm doing that i will make a video and i will post it on youtube and also over here on instagram so we can show like ways you can cook this ways in the best ways you can get for your 300 pounds um for your budget and the things that you can use up while using this as your main proteins as well so what like i said what is your favorite cut of beef 
What is your favourite steak? What is your favourite roast? What is your favourite recipe for using this? What do you predominantly like to have with beef? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know. Have you tried Moscow Farm? Have you tried even going to an organic farm and finding out information? Have you looked at what organic farms actually do? What are they actually doing for the environment and the actual farming industry? Let me know in the comments below. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel, liking this video, going over to Mosquito Farm and going and seeing what they're all about and everything like that. Um, go check out your local butcher, your local farm or any or small local businesses that are doing something different from the supermarkets that you might not have actually been aware of. Just go check them out. Give them your support rather than going to the supermarket and getting shite food, to be honest, shite and nowhere near the quality that you'd be getting from a small farm like Moscow. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, Moscow farm. But as you know, I can butcher things even that are Scottish. So I'm just giving you a warning. So that's me. I'm going to put this in the freezer and I, every time I make something, I will show you what I'm doing with it. Maybe not the steaks because the steaks are basically, like I said, I cook them on a skillet with some blackthorn salt and that is it. And I eat them as is. I don't usually eat them with sides or anything. I just tend to eat them the way they are. Uh, sirloin steak again. We kind of we actually keep it frozen. The sirloin steak, and what we usually do is we cut it really, really thin, like really shaving it thin. And I might actually use my meat cutter, actually meat slicer, and we shave it really, really, really thin to make it like similar to how they would do Philly cheese steak. And we make our meat sandwiches when we're making stuff like that, especially when you're using things like Sam the Cooking Guy. He does like the kind of dipped sandwiches that are like freaking redonkulous. So I will be probably doing that with that, me shaving that thinly, some sweet onion, some green pepper, probably some provolone in there. Nice roll, possibly going to make my own rolls again. Don't know whose recipe I'll use, you never know, it could be a Joshua, it might not. So we're using that. Same with rump steak as well. These two steaks I tend to use for beef and black pepper, which is a, a Asian dish. And again, you can buy the sauce pre-made or you can make it from scratch. It's actually relatively easy and if you make it yourself then you know exactly what's going in it. For diced casserole steak, again casserole, or you can marinate with, I've noticed if you marinate it with things like yoghurt, uh, again Moscow Farmer looking into doing that as well, which again you can use yoghurt and curry, um, what I do is I tend to marinate it in yoghurt with the spices for the curry, um, usually for up to two days sometimes I marinate it depending on the cut and depending on how long it has the how the toughness of the meat depending on how you cook it as well so up to two days with yogurt and spices and whatever you're using for your curry and then slow cook it but i still tend to brown it off on the skillet first and then put it in and then put your ingredients in and again that fake away curry will taste way better because you're using the best ingredients you're using such a good quality meat uh silver side again nice wee roast I would have that. I, I could easily just eat that myself. Most people know that when I go to town on meat, I savagely dismember it. That's just me. And that was even before I was keto and carnivore. It's just me. I love my meat. Uh, again, silver side. Top side again. This top side, I think I will be, when I defrost it, that I'm going to actually defrost it and I'm going to marinate this, chop it up and I'm going to make biltong with it and that's what I was talking about to the farmer today. We make our own biltong and then we also make our own jerky so uh, it tends to be topside that you use for that. So there's two of them here so I can easily make me some biltong that's absolutely delicious. It says that it goes out of date. Uh, used by the 5th of July 2024. Now it's not even the last to probably November. I think it's, it's not even the last to December 2023, let alone um, July 2024. Uh, fillet steak, again, I could eat both of them. My son could as well, that's his favourite cut. And I like his loads of mince here. Rump steak, again. So I use. I tend to use a lot of, well, fillet steak now. 
fillet steak is because of the fat content. Because I'm not keto or carnivore anymore, I don't need a high fat ish diet. And like I've said before, I am eating the way I am because of the type of training and exercise that I do. Uh, when I'm at maintenance, that's when I'll most likely go back to being carnivore because I've never felt better in my life, mentally and physically, since changing to keto and also changing to carnivore. So once I'm that, then there'll be a hell of a lot more meat being consumed, that's for sure. Do you like hauls like this? Let me know. If there's co if this content you like, then please give it a like, give it a share, go check out Mosquito Farms. There's a Facebook and there's also an Instagram. You can check them out there and what they do and what they represent um, and what their mission is for their farm and the future. Then you can go like, subscribe, share my YouTube, my Instagram and also on Twitch. And I will see you in the next video. And I look forward to creating delicious nominous from this delicious whole pack, meat pack. I can't wait to taste. I am just so hungry. So hungry right now. I could eat. I could eat it all. And I'll see you later.